Watcher everyone, Lady Ray here. So today we're going to build a Victorian mansion. So I got my inspiration from a Pinterest picture. Um, I will put that right here. Um, I tend to get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest. I think I've mentioned that before. But recently I've been getting a lot of inspiration from dollhouses and that's where this one came from. Um, there's a lot of them on Pinterest and for Victorian houses, they're really true to form. So it actually works out a lot better than finding actual pictures of Victorian houses where you can't see all the sides. When it comes to photos of dollhouses that people have made, um, you can see the interior, you can see all sides. So I actually like finding these photos and making them in The Sims. It's really simple. Um, well, simple for those of us who like to make Victorian homes. Victorian homes are not easy to roof. That was my biggest challenge with this home was roofing. In the end, I gave up. It's roofed but not properly. So if you do download this from the gallery, be mindful of that. Um, it just kept clipping on the inside, so it kept glitching. It is a glitch that I have in my game continuously is the roof glitch. Um, I know some simmers have that and some don't. Uh, it's really annoying when you do have it. Pretty much any time that you create a foyer, with a staircase, uh, an open foyer, which you'll see me do later. Your roofing will glitch if you have any roofing that would clip into the build. And then it will just basically come into your build. And then you have to re-roof everything and make it so that either all your roofing doesn't come inside your build or you are very clever in hiding your roofing if it does clip in. Um, but yeah, I wound up just giving up eventually. It It's roofed well so that you can't really see that I did give up in the end. Um, so yeah, I enjoy making Victorian homes. I don't know why, probably because I just love Victorian homes. I live in an Edwardian home, but I just enjoy making Victorian homes. The This home is partly renovated partly not. So you'll see that some rooms have beautiful um, wallpaper and some just look like they're from, you know, the 21st century. And I did that purposely. Um, you'll see that some Victorian homes that I do, I do do that because I, that's kind of how I envision a lot of modern Victorian homes to be. A lot of people don't keep them true to form. Um, they go in and they start renovating. So this is kind of how I envision the modern Victorian home to be. Original flooring. Most people keep the original flooring and keep the original layout in the fireplaces. But they'll go in and they'll start tearing down the wallpaper and, you know, painting the walls, flat colors. And so that's kind of what I thought for this home. Um, it does have four bedrooms, um, a dining room, a butler's room. I don't often put butler's rooms in my build. But it just seemed to fit with this build. Um, the family that I have, the story that I have going for this build is that there's a family that lives here. They just moved in. They inherited this home. It's been in the family for generations. They inherited it. But when they moved here, the mother just all of a sudden woke up one day. She just felt like something had happened to her. And all of a sudden she starts wanting blood and she hears her family members pulses in her ears and she just she can't stop wanting it and she's trying to resist her urges and she just can't remember what happened to her and as we know in the sims with the vampire cult um you can pretty much attack any sim you want and they won't really remember that it happened um so it's kind of the story going on here you know, will she find out what happened to her? Will she be able to keep herself from sucking her family member's blood? Um, so this house, I did build it in 
the world that we got with the vampire pack. Um, I used whatever pack I wanted. This wasn't a pack specific build. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the story that goes with this build. Uh, kind of an interesting one, I thought, but that's why it's kind of like a half modern, half Victorian home. They inherited it. So yeah. And I thought that, you know, they, they would have a butler. Maybe they inherited this butler and, you know, he's been with the family forever and so he has his own little, own little room and, you know, even though his furniture is updated, he's been there forever and, you know, he plays the violin, but he has these old portraits in his room that as they renovated, they wanted to get rid of these old portraits, but he couldn't, he just couldn't get rid of them. Kind of remind me of a creature from Harry Potter in a way. Um, that's kind of why I put those portraits in there. You know how he, creature from Harry Potter, just can't stand to get rid of the portrait of Mrs. Black and it's still his mistress and he has to do everything she says even though she's dead and it's a portrait. And he keeps all of the things from the Black House. So, yeah, that, that was kind of the inspiration for the, butler, the butler's room. Um, there are two and a half baths in this build. One, the half bath downstairs, and then two full baths upstairs. Um, I did not include a bathroom for the butler. I kind of figured he would make do um, in the off hours, maybe while the kids were off at school with the kids bathroom. Um, so yeah, this dining room, I love that table. I do, but there are just, the fine chairs that go with it are a pain. I just feel like there aren't any chairs. I wound up going with chairs from the Jungle Adventure Pack. I just feel like there aren't really chairs that go with it. And it was just really frustrating for me. Um, but that dining room is playable and everything does fit in there and they can sit in every single chair. Um, you'll see that later when I play test it. Um, and then I, I really was just struggling to figure out what to do with this wall. And I wound up, oh, it's a, it was a fireplace, but it no longer worked. So, you know, they, they made it a decorative fireplace. They sealed up the fireplace and it became a decorative fireplace. And it's where they kept all of their awards that family members had gathered over time. Um, all the bathrooms are pretty basic. Uh, it has the old time toilet and, you know, old fixtures that seem to go well with the house. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're still pretty basic. And every home, every room in the home does have a radiator. Um, I wanted to include that because I just thought, again, it went with the Victorian vibe. They probably got heating when the house was built. So I did put that in every room in the build. I made sure it fit. Um, the main problem I had was in this bathroom I'm doing right now. Uh, I had to finagle it in there and kind of make the bathroom work around the radiator. I actually enjoyed this master bedroom. I usually hate doing adult bedrooms, but I actually enjoyed this one. I kind of get into it. I'm not quite sure why, but I did. And I kind of did a really cool thing with those um, decorative pieces that I think we got, I'm not quite sure. Let's see what it, where we got it from, but I couldn't quite figure out which ones I wanted to use. Oh, we got it from the Perfect Patio. Um, and I sized them down and precisely put them on the wall. And it kind of looked really cool. It became like this focal point in the bedroom um, behind the bed. And yeah, I really like how it turned out. And then I, I did a teen room. I did a room for each, kind of each life stage of a child. Uh, there is a toddler baby room, a kid room, and a teen room. I enjoy doing teen rooms and toddler rooms and kid rooms. I mean, I, I enjoy every life stage. I don't really enjoy playing with every life stage, but I enjoy doing rooms for every life stage. Um, so, yeah, and it seems when I do a teen room or a girl's preteen room, I always put the <laughs> mirror in with the lights. And then I want to put makeup on the floor around it. I don't know if any of you, 
you ladies are like me when you guys were teens, but my makeup was always on the floor or around a mirror and my hair stuff was on the floor. Like I just didn't put it on a dresser. I don't know why that's a thing, but I know a lot of other teen girls who did that and we did it in college too. Like it just, I don't know, it was just what we did. Maybe because we shared makeup in college, too, even though that's so unsanitary, but we totally did it. Um, but I was also a sorority girl, so we shared a lot of things. So, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this room. I put a nice little guitar in there for her. I figured maybe she likes playing the acoustic guitar. And, yeah, it's just a typical teen room. Typical girly teen room. She has her own balcony. Kind of imagine her maybe sneaking out at night to see a boy or a girl. You know, seeing some sort of love interest. Maybe she even sees an alien. Who knows? Whomever she wants to see. Um, then we move on to the toddler baby room. Again, I kind of love how this one turned out. I just love the muted tones of, you know, the toddler rooms that I do. Um, but yeah, it, it c turns out kind of cute. And it's just very, like I said, muted, relaxing, and yeah kind of just has that vibe of newborn baby, very lax child. Yeah, so I like how that one turned out. Um, and again, I didn't really get to play test the toddler room, so if something doesn't work in there, I am sorry, but I didn't have a toddler to play test it with yet. So yeah, the kids room, I didn't put a dresser in this one. Uh, I thought maybe he's just a bookworm, or she is a bookworm, and so they have a desk and bookshelf, lots of bookshelves, and they just go at it with learning, 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 and maybe they store their clothes somewhere else in a dresser somewhere else in the house, and yeah, that's kind of what I envisioned for this kid. They are just love to learn. Um, and so, yeah, I have some Strangerville posters up there, a poster from one of the colleges, and just, yeah, they love to learn. Um, and so, you know, I have the craft box there, and some crafts that they've done, a little bit of a mess in the corner, because they're so focused on just absorbing everything they can possibly absorb, but there's a mess everywhere. Um, it's kind of how I've always been, so absorbed and learning everything that... There's little piles of clutter everywhere. My husband's the same way, so the two of us put together. There's a lot of clutter in our house. <laughs> I don't know how our son's going to deal with that because he, even though he's just two, he just loves to pick up everything. Clean. He has to clean everything. Um, he, he won't even play in his playroom if it's messy. Like, if we haven't cleaned it in a day or two, he won't play in it. it annoys the hell out of me. But, you know makes us keep on top of things, I guess, but still, like, kid, it's a mess. If you don't want to play in it, go clean it up. I know you're just two, but you know enough to go clean up your toys. <laughs> um, I did include a sunroom on this home, and I, I love these chairs, you know, from movies, and I just, I just think they're beautiful chairs, perfect for a sunroom. You know, they're, they're these wicker chairs with beautiful pallets of pillows and cushions. And they go so well in a sunroom. They remind me of the chairs that my grandmother has or has had over the year in her sunrooms. Because her old house had a sunroom on it. And now um, her new home in their retirement community also has a little tiny sunroom on the back of their house. And she always has this wicker furniture <laughs> with cushions and pillows just like this. So that's kind of what it reminded me of. So I just was like perfect for a sunroom. It just reminds me so much of my grandmother's home. So I just thought it's exactly what they would do in a sunroom. Maybe it's held over from whoever had the house before so they decided we're just gonna keep that furniture and let it go. You know, and the plants are still there. and It's just perfect for a sunroom. Um, the living room? I wasn't feeling the living room this time. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't like the layout. I think the only thing I liked about the living room was the fireplace and the bookcases I wound up placing in it. I'm not crazy about the layout of the little sofa and chairs, what I put on the wall. I just wasn't crazy about it this time. Um, I wound up just liking it, but I wasn't in love with it. It's probably why I saved it for last because I knew it was going to be hell to furnish. But yeah, it was okay. It, it went well with the house. 
I kind of just maybe thought, well, they just moved, you know, they just moved in here. It was, they just kind of put furniture in there. They didn't know what to do with the space either. It's kind of what I was thinking. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe these bookcases were built into the home and they were kind of the pièce de resistance. Yeah, I can't say that. Why did I even try? I can't say it. Um, used to be able to say it. Can't say it anymore. But you know what I mean. Um, let's not embarrass yourself, right, Lady Ray? Um, and then, yeah, I just put a little table and picture there. It's a placeholder in the hallway like I typically do. Entryways, just I put that little banquette in there that's usually for dining rooms, but sometimes I like to put it in an entryway because I just think it's so cute. But I hate that it doesn't have like a middle slot like most of the tables do. It's a little annoying. Um, and that mirror, what is it? Has anybody noticed that from like two updates ago that for some reason that mirror is now so high on the wall? Like ridiculously high. So now I used to use that mirror all the time. Ever since like two or three updates ago, that mirror just is so high on the wall. It just doesn't look right. For some reason it looked right this time but i usually don't use it anymore because it's so high it doesn't make any sense um i the exterior i wound up liking how it turned out i like the idea of two separate yards one of them being an exquisite garden you know that they've built over the years and it's old and you know just beautiful with statues and stuff and then the other gar the other garden or yard however you want to say it is just an activity center, you know, and it's where they go to relax and chill and the kids can run and play and they can plant plants and just hang out with their family, you know, and that side has a lot of trees to maybe block out that stuff because it, you know, their idea of their family image is grand and beautiful and, and they don't want people to see, you know, the more rough side of them. So that's why there's a lot of big trees on that side. Of the yard um but yeah I like how it turned out I feel like this build I want to put in a lot of activities in which I don't normally do but this time I did and everything works um and everything is well lit and yeah I think it turned out pretty great uh she did wind up catching herself on fire later on in three different areas of the home the living room the kitchen and the backyard because you know Batteries are my fetus. Um, I don't think any of them though were showed in the video. Um, yeah, and this is the beautiful garden that I decided just kind of fit well. Maybe it's maybe it's open to the public. You know, I put a little gate there out to the front, and maybe every once in a while they have little garden parties or something out there and invite their neighbors. And I don't know. I just really loved how it turned out, and I thought it looked pretty great. Um, I use most of the stuff from Romantic Garden. I love that pack. I really do. I just, I think everything from that pack is so beautiful. Um, and just works so well if you know how to use it. I know there are some people who just don't like that pack, but I think if you know how to use it and know how to use it well and if it's your vibe, then it winds up looking great. And I think it looked great in this build. It went well with this build. Um, and yeah, so then I wound up just finishing up the landscaping, um, which took a while to place because I put, I hate that those, those little pieces of landscape don't automatically copy themselves because you just gotta click and click and click. Um, yeah, and so this wound up, I wound up putting, uh, some eaves over the top there because it just didn't look finished with some columns um, in the insets there with the little balconies. Just didn't look finished though, I wound up doing that. I think it looks much better now. It looks it looks like it's meant to be there. Um, and then I use that mailbox at the end because it, it's the nicest of the mailboxes, I think. It just goes so well with these kinds of bills, you know, the cottages and the stuff. So this build does have some lot treats, which can definitely help your family. Um, and it's called Juniper uh, manner and you can see her play testing here um, and I always test everything like I've said before um, it's just something I need to do to make sure everything works all the time 
you know, I feel bad if I upload something and then somebody tells me, messages me and says, why didn't this work? You know, I do use move objects always, you know, so sometimes I know like if I uploaded it to the gallery and like, oh, why didn't this work? And I'm like, well, did you put move objects on? And if they're like, oh, no. Then I'm like, yep, that's probably why. And then they go in and they do that and it worked. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's probably why. But if it's something that I'm like, oh, I forgot to test that, then I actually do feel pretty bad. So that's why I play test everything. So yeah, like I said, this is Juniper Manor. It is available on the gallery now for upload. My name is Lee Ray. Please like, share, 